When you're truly in love, language and cultural differences seem to vanish. But when it comes to getting your parents' blessings and arranging the wedding, you may find yourself getting a crash course in tradition. This is precisely the challenge faced by Batsabile and Diren. And now we'll find out how love conquered all. They're young, they're in love, and they're quietly challenging South Africans to rethink their ideas about cultural boundaries. Diren Amir Chand and Batsabile M. Shlongo are a Peter Maritzburg couple who tied the knot recently with a wedding that was simultaneously traditional and cross-cultural. Michal caught up with them while they were enjoying their honeymoon and having some special memories captured in Durban. Love knows no reason, no boundaries, no distance. It has a sole intention of bringing people together to a time called forever. A beautiful quote indeed, and one that Diren and Batabile Amichand represent. Batabile owns a company specializing in branding and IT, while Diren is a sales consultant. But work was definitely far from their minds when they all met in the submarine restaurant. Look at this view. How incredible is that? Yeah. This great. I'm really curious to hear about your love story. I'm going to start off with you, Diren. How did you meet? Well, it was one of my clients' parties that they were having. I was invited, but I initially didn't want to go. So this guy dragged me there and I saw her there at the park while we were having the braai. Took notice of her, didn't want to say anything, was a little bit too shy. And then after that it started raining, so we moved it to one of the guys' house that stayed like about five minutes away. Went there and there was a soccer match, and she's also not a soccer fan, so we were like in one corner, we started chatting. And Batabile, has he gotten the story right? You know they always say men never get the full story gotten everything right except for his pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> he walked up to me and he asked me why I was being antisocial and I didn't know whether to take offense to that. I just didn't know what to say so that was like literally the first thing that came out of my mouth. I don't know what was going through my mind but that was the only thing that came out at that point in time. And what was the next step? So we went out the next day we did make arrangements for that and we were just talking in general and we got to know each other a lot better and then we started dating after that. But Abile, what was your knowledge of the Indian culture? Except for whatever experience I had with uh, friends in uni, I, didn't, I really didn't know much up until I met him. Indian curries and the colors and the music. Basically that and an um, occasional sari from a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and what have you come to love about the Zulu culture? Almost everything, because it's unique. Like small gestures, like for example, if they offer you a plate of food, now generally in our side, if they offer you and you're full, you ate, you can say no. You, in their culture, you can't. The significance of disrespect. Now that you decided, okay, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, it means it's time to introduce the families. How did that go down? I wasn't too keen. But the one day, um, I think his car went for service and uh, he asked me for a lift and I had to drop him off outside his house. As I jumped out, his mother for some reason was outside. Tabi, you know that was planned, right? And there, <laughs> she knew there was the car guy. Yeah. She just called us in. Um, so I went and I met her. Um, she's a very nice person, so it went very well. What would you say were the similarities between the two cultures? Well, I would say like the, in the Zulu culture, you get the labola. In our culture, you used to get the dowry. No more, no more, it's no more done, so... That, that is one of the similarities I picked up. And for you, Batabile? Some of the religious stuff when it gets done, to me it seems very similar, like offering um, food for the dead. Yeah. It's the little things. Well, it's lunch for two. I promise I'm not going to stay. I'm going to leave now and I see the food is coming. Ooh. The seafood looked and smelled delicious. But Michelle didn't want to spoil the honeymoon mood by playing third wheel. And besides, while the couple were enjoying their tete-a-tete, -tete, he had to <clears throat> see a man about a boat. No one can guarantee any newly married couple that the future will be plain sailing all the way. But Batabila and Diren have already navigated some choppy seas. And we wish them a long and happy voyage together. <laughs>